Welcome back to the TPR86CC build series. If you watched the last video, then you already know that I've got a belt-driven water pump from a go-kart that I'm going to try to mount to this scooter. And I spent the last video doing some research and some flow tests to find out how fast I wanted to drive the pump and so that I could order the appropriate pulleys. As you can see, I've got the pulleys in now. I went with a 12-tooth pulley for the crankshaft and a 30-tooth pulley for the water pump. That gives me a 40% drive ratio meaning the water pump will spin at 40% of the engine speed. And the water pump pulley I actually had to order with a quarter inch inside diameter, but my water pump has a 5 16 inch impeller shaft, so I've got to modify this to fit the water pump. Before I use the lathe, I wanted to show you that I did put the tachometer that I was using on the test rig on here. And all I did was basically drill a hole through the top of this cover and the magnet is mounted on top of one of the nuts in there and then this is obviously just a piece of thin sheet metal to hold the tack itself. I've switched this lathe over in the past to use XL drive pulleys for the motor and the spindle so it actually spins a little bit slower than it normally would out of the box because of that and notice on here that it says 50 to 1500 rpm now watch the tack. Now I've got to get into some harder stuff, which will be trying to figure out how to mount the pump to the engine and how to have it driven by the engine. But before I do that, I've got to go ahead and drain the coolant and remove this electric pump setup. Looks like I had a fail here. The whole top corner of this plate broke off and it's actually started right where I welded this on and these were some pretty crappy welds. Um, even as long as I've been messing with a flux core welder, I still have a very hard time uh, getting anything to weld decent when it's somewhere hard to get to. Like back here when I'm trying to weld around uh, a bracket and I really can't reach things. But at any rate, it looks like it probably failed starting right at that weld and then crack the whole corner off there. Now I need to try and figure out how to mount this pulley so that it can be driven by the crankshaft and drive the water pump. My initial thought was to do something like I showed you in the last video with Larry's setup where they made a piece that bolted on to the rotor and then there was the shaft out here where the pulley could mount to. My issue with that is that I was considering using these bolts here that are normally for the fan or the water pump drive and that would take about a two and a half inch uh, diameter to make a plate that large. What I actually wanted to do was to make it out of one piece of steel and machine it all on the lathe because I figured that way um, everything should be able to stay true. And it's very important that this stays true because you're talking about something that's going to spin at 14,000 RPM 
you don't want it to be wobbly um, and out of balance. So that's a big chunk of metal, a two and a half inch diameter rod, especially uh, to work with the mini lathe. I'm not saying it can't be done, but then when you start taking that down to five sixteenths, you're also removing a lot of material. Um, so I'm not sure that that's going to be the greatest idea for me. Another alternative would be maybe to make that in multiple pieces. So maybe make a plate and then weld something to it that comes out of there um, with a shaft on it for this pulley to mount on. My concern there is whether or not I'll end up having that run straight because there's a good possibility that when I put those together and weld them on, um, I could get it a little crooked. And I guess you could machine it afterward, um, but I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with that or not if I don't have to do that. Another thing with that, um, you would be putting more weight, uh, more mass here further away from center, which that's not really my concern right now. Um, but then that would start to negate the effects of the light rotor here, um, the light flywheel setup, whatever. So that kind of leaves me with the idea of maybe replacing this nut and making a nut that is a drive adapter. Um, so basically a nut and it would come up and have a shaft to mount the pulley on. And that I could do on my own, I believe, on the lathe. I've got some hex stock around because I'd need a way to be able to tighten this down and loosen it. So I have some hex stock and if I could machine that down properly, I could leave a hex portion here so that I could get a wrench or a socket or whatever on there and be able to loosen and tighten it. And it would also put all of the mass toward the center. And if I could machine it all on the lathe, it should be able to stay straight. So that's what I'm thinking I'm going to go with right now. I do have some concerns about either of the ways that I mount a pulley on here. So regarding the nut method, one thing that I'm kind of afraid of is if you put this pulley on here, the crankshaft will spin this way, water pump's going to turn that way. If it resists, I would think that it may try to move the pulley backwards, which would in turn be trying to loosen the nut. I could have that wrong. I may be mixed up on my thinking there. That's one concern. I don't really think it's an issue, but perhaps a possibility. Um, another thing would be um, if it loosened up or if there just wasn't enough force holding this that it could possibly, whether it was the, the uh, plate design here or the nut design, um, it could possibly put some force here and move this rotor so it would throw the engine out of time. Again, I think that's probably far-fetched. I don't honestly think I've got to worry about that. Uh, just some things to put out there, though. Another thought that I had with the nut style versus the plate style here would be that if I use the nut, I would think that all of the force really is being applied to the end of the crankshaft. And so it would kind of act like a lever and maybe it would put more force on the crankshaft that way. Don't know if it would really matter. Don't know that it's going to be that much force anyway. It just seems like if I use the plate and it were mounted to the rotor, this rotor grabs onto the flywheel taper, which is further back here. So maybe it wouldn't be getting the same kind of leverage. I don't really know. I'm not sure if I am correct in my thinking um, with those, but there's some concerns, um, just some things to think about.
I want the bottom of this hole to be flat because I'm trying to create clearance for the end of the crankshaft. I've always got a collection of old, dull, and broken drill bits around, and I've got one the size that I need. So I think what I'm gonna do is try to grind the end of this flat and then see if I can't make that flat bottom hole that I'm after. That's far from perfect, but hopefully it'll work. It's kind of hard to look down in there and show you what exactly it's like, but I'm getting the same measurements on the outside as I am on the inside, basically. So it looks like it works. After getting the threads cut, I took the piece over to the scooter and threaded it onto the crankshaft. And when I was doing that, I noticed that it looked like it was a little bit off. So I brought it back over here to the lathe. I've got it chucked up and I just installed the tap. That way we can easily see if it looks like the threads may be crooked in there. And clearly that is not spinning true, so it looks like the tap must have went in just a little bit crooked. And when you're gonna spin something at 14,000 RPM, a little bit crooked will not cut it. So this piece is now junk. I went in the house pretty mad at myself because I just wasted time and material. Nobody really enjoys failing. It's even more fun when you're doing it on camera. Um, but posted about it on the forum and John, that's 190 mech on the 49ccscoot.com forums offered up some ideas for me. Um, first off, he actually sent me plans for a totally different adapter for the crankshaft, which I'll probably share with you later because I actually like it better than this plan of making sort of a nut. But in talking to him, he also gave me an idea that if I were to use a piece of a crankshaft mounted in the lathe, after I cut the threads into a piece, then I can mount it on that piece of the crankshaft turn the crankshaft and that nut and machine it from there and it basically forces the material or the workpiece to be true with the crankshaft even if the threads are a little bit off. So that may be a kind of an example of working smarter and not harder because if it's tough for me to get something very true as far as threading the crankshaft then that would be a way to kind of make up for it. One negative that I can think of there that would apply specifically to this instance is that it would put the hex portion of the piece still out of round because I'm not machining down the hex portion since that's what I'm using to put a wrench or a socket on. So that would still be out of, out of round a little bit. I don't know how much something like that would matter. I guess it would depend just how far off um, you were as far as being straight and true when you cut the threads. And I actually do have a crankshaft, the end of a crankshaft on the flywheel side that I cut off because I was lightening a flywheel in the past. Um, so that will be an option for me. I think I'm gonna go ahead and retry this. I'll see if I can get the threads in there any straighter with a new piece, but this time I'm gonna cut the threads first. I'm not gonna do any other work until I cut the threads. Since you've already seen some of the processes in this, I'm gonna skip a lot of stuff. That way you're not watching it all twice in a row. But I do wanna show you this time, I'm trying to be more careful with the setup. So the last time I just put the hex stock in the lathe, chucked it up, and I guess you could say kinda of hope for the best. This time around, what I'm doing is I'm going to, I've indicated here on the flat sections, uh, I've got this one zeroed out. This is kind of the lowest point of the whole thing. And then when I go around, you'll see that I'm actually off a good bit um, just with this chucked up. So that probably didn't help me at all. You can see there I'm already off uh, two and a half thousandths or so. And it gets worse as I go around here. Just find the lowest spot, should be the center there. That's about six thousandths that it's off. A little more there. Now it's gonna start working its way back. So if I'm able to get this trued up a little better in here, then that might help my result as well.
I've just spent probably the last 15 to 20 minutes rotating this around, watching the indicator and using a brass hammer to tap down the high spots. And I've got it within about a thousandth of an inch. It doesn't seem like I can get it any better than that. I'm not sure that these hex bars are machined uh, true enough that you can or not, but here's what it looks like now. So you can see that's less than a thousandth. About a half thousandth. Almost on zero. A little less than a thousandth. A little less than a thousandth. Then we're back to our zero. It's a lot better than it was when I just stuck it in there and hoped for the best. I've just gone through the process of drilling and tapping this as carefully as I know how. This is as far as I can get the tap in here while the tap was in the tailstock. The lathe just doesn't have the power to turn it when I'm trying to get it at slow speed and I can't turn it any harder uh, by hand, any further by hand right now. And here's how that looks. So you can see it's pretty much like it was before. It's still pretty wobbly. Either something is inherently wrong with what I'm doing or the tap is maybe a little bit crooked. It's not straight. I went ahead and mounted the tap in the chuck because I'm curious to see if this thing wobbles when I just spin it by itself. Yeah, that looks pretty similar to me to what I'm seeing when I mount the tap in the part and then rotate the part. Haven't measured the run out on either one, but that looks really similar. So I'm guessing that the tap itself is bent or out of round or out of true. And I would assume probably the easy way to fix that would be to replace the tap. I've done multiple things since the last clip, but I really don't want this to turn into a full hour of me just trying to cut threads with a tap on the lathe. So let me just kind of summarize what's been going on. So the first thing is I bought a new set of taps. It's actually a set of three taper plug and bottom taps by Irwin. And I was hoping those would be straight and go in straight and solve all my problems. Unfortunately, I wasn't that lucky. Every single one of these, when I put them in the chuck and spin it, they're all wobbly. Um, none of them are true. So anyway, I tried tapping apart with those um, and didn't really get far. It, it was still way out of round. So then it was suggested to me by Pedo Brad on the 49ccscoot.com forums that maybe my tail stock was out of alignment with my head stock. So I did some alignment checks there and I did adjust it a little bit and I think I got it in a little better alignment than it was. And then I took a piece of one inch long um, round bar there. I initially drilled it out and I measured uh, the distances all around there to see if it was drilling centered and then I bored it to see if it was much difference. And it looks like it's drilling uh, pretty well because it was uh, a concern that maybe when the drill was going in, the drill just wasn't going totally straight. It came in at an angle. And then if that were happening, then I probably wouldn't be able to get my tapping right just because of that. But there may be some minor angle there, but it doesn't look like it's certainly not the entire issue here. So then for my last attempt, what I did was I very carefully um, put another piece of hex stock in there. It's one that I had already put threads in the other side before that turned out really crooked. Um, I had measured that this thing, this taper tap here had 14 thousandths of an inch of run out on it. So I drilled, I tapped in, I started tapping in as much as I could on the lathe. And then once it was tapped in about as much as I could by hand on the lathe, I took it out or I left it in the lathe actually. And then I measured the run out of the tap itself, tried to tap that straight, tried to knock it straight with a brass hammer, just lightly tapping on it. And then I proceeded to hand tap it and finish off the threads that way. Then I threaded it onto this crankshaft piece. This is just a piece of a crankshaft that I had cut off in the past. And this thing runs super true. Um, if you try to check run out on this, the needle basically stays on the zero. It might move a tiny bit. So I threaded it onto there and then checked the run out here on the end across the flats on this hex stock. And I had 14 thousandths of an inch of run out, which is better than some of the other things I've seen because I've had as much as, I think it was 45 thousandths run out uh, when checking various things. And I think with a tap with 14 thousandths run out to get 14 thousandths run out on here, it could just be a coincidence, but I'm guessing that's probably as close as I'm going to ever get with it. 
Knowing that that's probably about as good as I'm going to get right now without either A, buying a bunch more taps and hoping they're straight, like it was suggested to me also by Pedo Bread that maybe I could get some different clearance taps, like an H1 or H2 clearance tap, um, and that may be a little more snug in there and may cause it to run a little more true. Um, and also I could just buy tap after tap and hope that one of them actually ran true when I spun it. Or to go with machining the threads into the piece first, get them as straight as I can still. And after that's done, just like I talked about earlier, then go ahead and machine down the rest of the piece. So with this example, the hex section would still be 14 thousandths of an inch um, out of round here, but everything else would be true. So I could look into different options for maybe uh, not using hex stock or something and just cutting flats into here or something like that so I could keep the entire piece true. Um, but that's basically going to be the options if I want to work with that. And then there is another kind of complication here where it's been pointed out to me that basically no one uses thread on adapters like this for anything, um, especially high RPM because threads naturally have a clearance in them. So it's harder to get those true. It would be better off with a plate that mounts to the uh, rotor or something like that. The thread on option will probably never be the best option for that reason. So with that said, it seems like it probably wouldn't be that smart to uh, go ahead and continue building this, but I am looking at this also as an opportunity to learn a little more because I'm clearly not that great with a lathe still. So I think what I'm going to do is cut another piece and I'm going to go ahead and tap into the end of it straight as I can get it. And then after that's tapped, then I will machine whatever I need to this way and reface it, etc. while it's threaded on this crankshaft that I know to be true. And that's probably going to be about as true as I can get apart. I decided that I'll try to make this out of a piece of one inch round bar instead of hex stock. Again, because if I'm going to have to recut all of the outside dimensions of this, if I leave the hex here, it's going to be out of round. So maybe once I'm done with everything else, I can find a way to cut some flats into this that'll actually work for a wrench if nothing else. Now that this is trued up and cut on the crankshaft, which is also running true, I should be able to take this off of the crank and mount it directly in the chuck, and then I can go ahead and face off each end so that I've got an actual straight cylinder and continue with whatever cuts I need to make for my adapter. Just to be certain that I was correct, I went ahead and checked the part. Looks pretty good.
I got the pulley to fit as you can see. I spent all this time trying to make this thing true and then when the pulley is bolted on, this outer flange is wobbly. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that down so hopefully it'll spin more true. This adapter should be mostly finished now, but it's going to be kind of tough to tighten it onto the crankshaft with just a round surface here. So I'm going to have to try and grind some flats into this, and I'm going to try to use my tool post grinder to do that. Obviously I can't just grind flat sections anywhere that I please and have them work with a wrench or a socket, so it actually needs to be indexed. So for instance, if I want just two flats for a wrench, I'd need them 180 degrees apart. Or if I wanted to do a hex, then I'd need to mark it every 60 degrees um, to flatten it out. So my plan for that is to mount a degree wheel to the lathe. Um, I've actually got this adapter here that I use for cutting plate and such. I can mount it in here, mount that in the chuck, and then mount the degree wheel to the lathe, set up a pointer, and then I will probably just mark the chuck. So that way I can remove this, put my workpiece in here, and then I can just go by the markings on the chuck uh, so I know exactly where I need it indexed each time I want to make a cut. Just in case it wasn't totally clear from watching, with a degree wheel set up in the chuck and the dial indicator as a pointer for that, I then put on this magnetic holder for a dial indicator. It sticks to the metal top here on the lathe. I ground down the end of a screw into a point and just screwed that into there. And then I use this every 60 degrees to make a marking on top of the chuck. And that way I can easily index this without having to have the degree wheel actually mounted to the lathe. I've got my tool post grinder mounted and I put a bunch of washers under here to get it to hover above the workpiece the closest I could get it. And all of these washers are 47 thousandths of an inch thick. And with the best combination of those, using a feeler gauge to check the gap here, I'm about 10 thousandths of an inch um, from the bottom of the cutter over the top of the workpiece. The workpiece is 960 thousandths diameter and I'm hoping to cut it down to work with a three quarter inch wrench or socket. So to do that, I would have to cut off 210 thousandths total or 105 thousandths on each side for each flat that I cut. So doing the math there, if I remove three of these washers and I have measured multiple ones and they are actually um, right on spec each one at 47 thousandths, if I remove three of those then that will take me down to 141 thousandth and I have some shims um, which is too much because I'm looking for about 105 I have some shims for variator spacing that are one millimeter thick so about 39 thousandth and that will take me to 102 thousandths cut so I'm gonna start there that's a nice simple setup that may not end up small enough but I'm not sure how much uh, chatter or play will be in here or exactly how the cuts will come out so I'm just gonna try and start with that setup It's a good idea to try to hold the chuck in place when you're using the tool post grinder. And a simple solution that's worked pretty well for me in the past is just what you're seeing here. I took the back cover off. I've got a pair of vice grips. I just clamped them around the spindle nuts up here. And then I use a bungee cord to keep pressure on them. And it could still move, but it would take a good bit of pressure to move it that I haven't seen this cutter try to put on it yet. 
um, and it's just a bit of trial and error to get these vice grips in the right spot so that you can align the marks on the top here of the chuck and the pointer. I miss making it work with three quarters or 19 millimeters by just a very small amount. So I'm going to try to change the shimming underneath of my cutter and drop it down about seven to eight thousandths of an inch and recut all of the uh, flats again. It's not setting down as deep as I'd like it to in the rotor, and that's my fault because I can see what I've done. I've cut the threads all the way up flat with the back of this basically nut adapter, and the threads don't actually run all the way down to the base here of the rotor. This section of the crankshaft is larger, so I'm gonna have to open up the back here and provide some clearance for that if I want it to go all the way down against there. In stock form, what they did was they used a washer that would go over that, and so the nut uh, would seat all the way down, but I was trying to make this adapter so that I didn't need a washer at all in there. Let's see if this does any better. much more like I was hoping it would fit. The adapter looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here, and when I come back next time, I'm going to start trying to figure out how to mount the water pump to the engine. As always, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful, and please subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.